for your goodness and your grace, Lord Jesus. Yes. Lord, we love you tonight, and we thank you, dear Father, for what you've done all this week, especially what you've done last night. Oh, yes. Souls that were saved and lives that were touched. But God, what you've done all this week will not be sufficient for God, what we need tonight. Yes. And God, what you already have prepared on the table for us to feast from. Father, I pray, God, that you touch everyone under the tent, outside the tent. And Father, that we may leave tonight much differently than the way we came. The evangelist, and I pray, God, that you'd anoint him from on high and all the singing there, Lord Jesus. I pray, God, that we just exalt you and lift you up, God, tonight. Lord Jesus, we need for you to just come and indwell in us, oh God, tonight. And pour fresh oil upon us, God, tonight. Because, God... Like I said, Lord, what you did last night would not be sufficient for what we need tonight. And Father, I pray you touch every home that's represented here tonight. Every boy, every girl, every mom, every dad. And Father, I pray, God, that ones that may have come under this tent, God, tonight, God, in chaos has brought up, just has broke out in their life. God, they may have come in with a smile upon their face. But God, they're broken into a million pieces. God, they may have shaken somebody's hand and encouraged them along the way because, God, they were so discouraged. And Father, tonight I pray, God, that they leave this tent tonight. God, like many others all this week, they have left differently than the way they came. And Father, I pray, God, that you'd empower us one more time this side of heaven. God, that we may worship you in spirit and in truth. And God will bow and roll the head and give you praise and glory and honor for all that you do tonight. In Christ's name we pray. And the people of God said, Amen. And the people of God said, Amen. And I said, What did God's people say? Amen. Give the Lord praise all over the house tonight. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord if you can. Because you know what I have? Well, I've got one more river to cross, one more mountain to climb, one more valley that I gotta go through, leaving my trouble behind. One more battle with the devil, I know he'll understand. I'm going through with Jesus, hallelujah, holding to the best God hand, holding to the best God hand. I've had a lot of trouble and trials in my little life span, but I'm standing Yeah. Oh. 
Jesus, hallelujah. Holy to the next God of heaven. Holy to the next God of heaven. Well, I've got one more in the cross. One more mountain to climb. I got one more mountain that I gotta go through. Come on, I'm leaving my trouble behind. One more battle with the devil. And I know he'll understand. I go through with Jesus, hallelujah. Holy to the next God of heaven. Give the Lord praise all over the house. That's the praise. All right. Let's uh, stand all over the uh, tent tonight. We're going to sing a couple songs uh, together and worship the Lord. How many of you are glad to be in the Lord's house tonight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey. <clears throat> now, if you didn't get it this week, this is your last opportunity under the tent tonight to get it. Some of you have been holding out and waiting for the, just the right time. Some of you just got dignified, not realizing we out here in the parking lot under the tent. I, some of us just need to forget about what our neighbor to the left or our neighbor to the right might be thinking about us because there's a God in heaven that wants to hear our worship, that wants to hear our praise. I want you to just go to church for a little while tonight. Just act like it's you and God if you got to because it is you and God. I'm glad there's a God that is present in our difficulties and his presence means so much in my life. You can have money, you can have fame, you can have all that, but if you don't have Jesus, listen.
war between death and life in their own a tree. The Lamb of God was crucified, and he went on down to hell. He took back every key. He rose up as a lion, and he set all captives free. And there ain't no just y'all two singing. Is that right? Uh, we got a special treat. Uh, they're going to sing a little bit and Nathaniel's going to uh, preach a little while. So you come on up here and uh, while they're moving around, uh, let me make mention of this because with everything going on at the end, I'm sure I may forget this. Um, we've got a, a, an opportunity to sow into the ministry of Brother Kenny Marr and what he does. Um, he uh, was able to get 
another tent by faith and uh, he's going to put that into use. He said, I think in a couple weeks he'll be using that in the gospel ministry. And uh, we need to, I, I miss my goal to raise at least a thousand dollars. And so if you can help in that, I want you to pray about what you can do and let's give and let's watch what God does uh, with your offering uh, and reaching people. He'll, he'll tell, I'll let him come up here in just a little while at the end and tell a little bit about his ministry for those of you not familiar. He goes all across the country preaching the gospel. He pastors a church. He just makes me tired uh, just to listen to him, all right? Uh, so we appreciate uh, we appreciate uh, Brother Mike Brian and Michael Spargo being here. Some folk from Tabernacle are here. Are we got folk from New, uh, New Faith as well? All right, praise the Lord. Thank y'all for coming. We've got North Belmont in the house. We've got rednecks from Dallas in the house. Hey, hey, we ought to be able to have some church, all right? Um, grab us. All right, there we are. Red and blue is where the one you can be seated. Nathaniel, welcome to the people. Well, if y'all glad you saved on a Thursday night, say amen. Yeah. How many of you can say God's been real good to you? Yeah. Way better than we deserve. Yeah. I like this old song. As the world looks upon me, as I struggle. Oh, 
things he's done. Oh, he meets my every need. Yes, he's been so good to me. And I can't help but praise the Lord for all he's done. For all he's done. I'm going to lift my hands and praise him. If I started now until I die, there'd still be many more. But if I can mention only one, I'd have to thank him for his son. Now that's enough to praise the Lord for all he's done. For all he's done. I'm going to lift my hands and praise him. song we sang first about the roof over our head, the shoes on our feet. I thank God for those temporal blessings and I thank God for all of them. But I'm, aren't you glad that God's people got something we can shout about even on the worst of days? I'm glad I got something better to shout about than a roof over my head and clothes on my back. But I'm glad one day I met Jesus and I'm glad he saved my soul and what he did he washed all my sins away. Anybody glad your sins are gone tonight? Amen. I love this song. <clears throat> While walking down memory lane not so long ago, Satan came by my way, making me feel low. He brought up thoughts of hurt and pain when I had gone astray. He wanted to discourage me. I walked along my way He said you're undeserving brother Joe Cause I know where you've been I have a record of your life When you were bound by sin I know your darkest secrets That you would never tell What makes you think you don't deserve A place with me in hell well, I heard the old accuser, and this was my reply. You're right for all the things I've done. I sure deserve to die. 
Cause my righteousness is filthy rags My goodness is unclean There's only one thing I can say To what you've said to me It's under the blood Jesus tonight, and I'm thankful that they don't sing about it earlier. I'm thankful that I got a home in heaven tonight. I'm glad this world ain't my home. I'm just passing through, and I'm glad heaven is more than a fairy tale, that it's more than a myth, but I believe there's a real city called heaven whose builder and maker is God, and one of these days, all the same born again children of God are heading there, and what a day. A glorious day that's going to be. Listen to Gracie sing yes, and we're going to preach a little bit. Let's shout about heaven for a little bit. Tonight. Here is coming the day when no heartache shall come, no more clouds in the sky, no more tears to dim.
Bible for a few moments tonight with me to the book of Numbers, the Old Testament book of Numbers tonight, chapter number 14, Numbers chapter number 14 tonight, and while you're turning and finding your place, I want to thank the Lord uh, first and foremost for salvation that is in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm thankful it's still good to be saved, amen, and I'm thankful I'm, I'm a child of the King. Thankful that my name is wrote down in glory. Amen. And I bless his name for that. And I'm glad. I'm thankful for that eternal salvation. Because uh, if you could lose your salvation, I would have today coming up 85. It's, if, how y'all live in that all the time is beyond me. Uh, I, just, I, I had to repent of my sin on the way here coming up through that traffic. Amen. Uh, but it is so good to be here. Pastor Chris, thank you for the, un, for the opportunity and the privilege. And I know y'all been having a time around here this week. And I don't know what I'm doing up here. I feel like a mule at the Kentucky Derby. And uh, but then I heard y'all had one around here last night. And I said, thank God. I was nervous. My mother-in-law would never make it to the house of God. And y'all got, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just moving right along. Amen. But I'm so glad for what the Lord's been doing around here this week. And I'm thankful that God is still saving sinners. Amen. And he's still working. How many of y'all know we need revival? We don't need less church. We need more church. Yeah. This ain't time to quit. It ain't time to get off. The, it's time to keep on keeping on. Yeah. Yep. And Pastor Chris, thank you. I know you get anybody you want to have. It means the world for me to be here at Gracie. And I, I'm glad my friends are here tonight. I love these, this crowd, a section over here. And I know they smell like Paul Malls when you walk past them, but I still love them anyways. <laughs> praise God. But it's good to be saved. Amen? How many of y'all glad you saved? Amen. Yeah. Let's stand all over the church. Let's stand all over the tent. Numbers chapter 14 tonight. Numbers chapter 14. If you're there, say amen. amen. Look in verse number 6. The Bible says, And Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. And they spake unto the com company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it is an exceeding good land. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it us, a land which floweth with milk and honey. Only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Their defense is departed from them. I like this line. And the Lord is with us. Uh -huh. Fear them not. I want to preach to you for a few minutes tonight on this thought on facing your giants. Facing your giants. You can be seated tonight. The truth be told tonight is that everybody under the tent is afraid of something. If I was to start listing some stuff that you could potentially be afraid of, hands would go all over the place tonight. Yes, if I was, how many of y'all are scared of spiders? Some of you might raise your hand. There's people in here tonight that's scared of the dark. There's some that are scared of heights. There's some that are scared of roller coasters. There's some that are scared of snakes. Can I get a witness right there? Yes, how many of y'all believe the only good snake is a yes. 
I told the church the other day, if you or one of them people's got a pet snake, get away from me. Amen. amen. Only weird people got pet snakes. Somebody say amen right there. I just felt God on that. Yes, sir. Afraid of snakes. Some people are afraid of crowds. There's some people that are afraid of being by yourself. There are some people that's afraid to sing. Some people are afraid to get on a platform in front of people. I'm a hypochondriac. I'm afraid of getting sick. Anytime I get a headache, I done diagnose myself with all kinds of diseases and things. I told my wife, I thought for the longest time I had lung cancer, and then I just found that I had COVID, amen. But I, I diagnosed myself with all kinds. I'm, I'm scared of being sick. But the truth be told is that fear is a very powerful emotion. Fear has crippled the mighty, frightened the capable. Fear is mighty enough to even keep God's best from living in all that God has for them. Fear brings stagnation. Fear blinds the eye of faith. I need an amen right here. Fear is a liar. Fear will convince you of things that are not even real. Fear can have you living in fairy tale land and you've done convince yourself that things are happening and it could not be farther from the truth. That is what fear can do to your life. And that is what we find in our text. And before we draw out some truths, I do think some background material is needed so you can understand the context. We come to Numbers chapter 14 tonight and we find that Israel is God's emancipated, set free people. They have been delivered from the bondage of Pharaoh. They've walked across not on mushy ground, not in knee-deep water. They wasn't doggy paddling, but they was walking across on dry ground. And they get into the wilderness, and by this point, they've only been in their journey for about two years. And there's only one last obstacle for them to overcome before they can get to the land of Canaan, and that is the Jordan River. Now keep in mind tonight that Canaan land was not just like you and I jumping over the county. It wasn't like us heading across town. But for the people of God, Canaan was a place of great expectation. Canaan was a place you heard Mama and Papa talk about. It was one of them places that they told you one day God's people was going to get to get to enjoy that land that is flowing with milk and honey. And tonight I want to say this. I know that there's some preachers that maybe if you do this you can straighten me out after church. I, I don't know at all. But I have heard a lot of times that people liken Canaan as unto heaven. But I do not believe that that is is the best typology for Canaan land because uh, how many of you know that in Canaan land they had to fight some battles and I'm glad when we get over there there ain't no more battles to fight hallelujah they still had to deal with sin in Canaan land and I'm glad when I get home I'm kissing sin goodbye hallelujah Canaan in my opinion is not a good picture of heaven but then you say preacher what is it a picture of what I believe it is is a picture for the child of God of a place of victory. It's a picture of a place of blessing. It's a picture of us getting to a place where we can enjoy the goodness of God. Now, don't tell some Baptist friends I know, but how many of you are glad that you don't have to live like your mother-in-law moved in, ain't going to move out anytime soon for all the rest of your life, but hallelujah, I mean, you ain't got to frown all your life. You ain't got to live defeated all your life, but there is a such thing as victory in Jesus. There is a such thing as joy unspeakable and full of glory. There is a such thing as the peace of God that passes all understanding. And I'm, I, listen, I, I, I know when you start preaching like this, people get nervous because, listen, I, I believe what we just sang about heaven. I believe we ought to shout about heaven. I believe we ought to just jump chairs and throw hymn books over how good heaven's going to be. But there are some people that can only look forward to the sweet by and by because all their life is is a nasty now and now but how many of you is glad hallelujah you can have a little heaven to go to heaven in and we don't have to wait till we get there to enjoy God or his goodness hallelujah there is a Canaan land experience for the child of God and we come to our text tonight and we see that they're almost there. 
but they got one last obstacle in their way. And that is there is giants in the land. And that scared the absolute fire out of them. They couldn't overcome it. They couldn't get around it. They lived defeated, disillusioned, and discouraged. And tonight I come to Dallas to tell somebody I don't know what the giant is in your life. But how many of you know the devil will come to steal, to kill, and to destroy? And can I get a witness right here? The devil does not want you living in God's best for your life. And again, I don't know what your giant is. You might have individual giants. You might have marital giants. We have church giants. I don't care what it is. Whatever your giant is, the devil wants you to view your giant the same way that these people are viewing these giants in our text tonight. And if we're not careful, we have to learn how to face these giants because if not, we're going to live defeated and we're not going to get all that God has for us. And can I get a witness right here? It is high time that God's people rise up because we've been defeated for far too long. We've let the devil bully us around. It is time for God's people to rise up and walk in some victory and walk in some anticipation and get all that God has available for us in this life tonight. I'm not interested in these attitudes of the ten spies. But I am interested in the mindsets that Joshua and Caleb had. Right. And tonight, real, I'm, I'm going to preach fast. I'm going to go find me a milkshake somewhere. But tonight, I want to say every one of us in this room tonight can face our giants by adopting some mindsets that I see in this text tonight. Mindset number one, if you're taking notes, in order for us to face our giants, number one, you've got to be focused in your walk with Christ. You've got to be focused in your walk with Christ. Notice verse number, uh, verse number seven of our text. Yes, there's giants, there's obstacles, but look what Caleb and Joshua have to say. They say the land which we pass through to search it is a good, exceeding land. Now, by the way, we see here this land they're talking about is a place in verse number 9. It's flowing with milk and honey. And that is referring to blessing and prosperity and peace. And what we see in our text is that Joshua and Caleb had their focus on something beyond what the giants had in front of their life. They were focusing on that land that is flowing with milk and honey. It was focusing on that land that God had promised to them. And they were honed in on it with a raised sharp focus. Now again, I was studying this and immediately my, my doubt crept up and said, well, there is no way I can live like that because I don't have focus like Joshua and Caleb had. There is no way that I can tap into that. But I was reading this text tonight and the truth is that the same two places, the same two anchors that Joshua and Caleb had their focus in is the same places you and I can put our focus in tonight. You say, what are you trying to say? Go back to chapter 13 verse number 1 notice where their first their, fo their first focus was at verse number 1 of chapter 13 the Bible said and the who the Lord spake unto them their focus number 1 was on the word of God their hope was not based on Oprah their hope was not based on the brethren their hope was not based on their financial status their hope was not based on their 401k but you see Joshua and Caleb were was able to live with the focus because they had their focus hankered in in the fact that God had gave them a word. It wasn't in their feeling. It wasn't in their emotions. But hallelujah, God gave them a word. And if God said it, that settles it tonight. The Word of God. No, the Word of God, it was anchored in the will of God. You see, they understood chapter 13, verse 2. God had gave Moses the, I mean, gave him the plan. It was the perfect, sovereign, providential plan of God that the children of Israel were to walk into the land of Canaan. They understood that Egypt was not where they were supposed to live forever. They knew it was God's will. They not wander in the wilderness forever. But they knew God had a plan for their life. And that was to get to that place of blessing. It was to get to that place of victory. It was to get to that place of the goodness of God. God. And you say, preacher, what are you trying to say? Tonight the reality is this. What, what, what your 
focus it on will determine whether or not you get to Canaan. The problem most of us are so miserable is we can't enjoy God because all we see is our problem. All we see is our bad day. All we see is that work situation. All we see is that family situation. But hallelujah tonight, we need some people to adopt that attitude of Joshua and Caleb and say by the grace of God, yes, I might see a problem and yes, I might see a giant and yes, I might see a bad day, but I also see a land flowing with milk and honey. Aren't you glad? Hallelujah. God's got a plan. You ain't got to live in despondency. Quit looking at your mountain. Quit looking at your giant and walk in the fact that God has a will for your life and that's to get you to the place of the blessing of God. Their focus was on, let me ask you a question. Like, what is your focus on? The problem is we sing, thank God I'm free, free, free. But some of us come to church, we're so bound up and ain't even thought. Because all we do is see our problem. How many of you know I need an amen right here? It's hard to worship God and worry at the same time. It's hard to walk in victory when all you see is your rear view mirror. What are you focusing on? They were focused. Mindset number two. Not only were they focused, but number two, I want you to see this. They were faith-filled in this text. Look in verse number eight of our text. Chapter 13, 14, verse number eight. If the Lord delight us, watch this phrase, then he can bring us. No, that ain't what it says. Mm -hmm. Then he might bring us. No, that ain't what it says. No. no, he's thinking about it. No, that ain't what it says. What are they saying? He what? He will bring it in our life. You see tonight, if you go back to chapter 13 and verse 30, you know the story. Y'all heard this your whole life. There was 12 spies that went out. Brother Joe 10 brought back that negative report. Only two of them believed God. It was Joshua and Caleb. Yes. Here's what jumped out at me this week studying this. Out of the 12 spies, we only know the names of two of them. Yep. Joshua and Caleb. Yes. You know what that tells me tonight? That if you want to be forgotten, just keep on living in doubt. And don't believe God. You won't know who people remember. It's people that say God can. He will bring us through. Listen, how many of y'all know God? people don't listen to people that tell everybody how bad it is? We need some people that say God can still work. And he can, he can still save. And he still can sin. God can. There was faith filled in this text. And again, Listen, we hear preaching on faith and we say, oh, I got little faith. I got weak faith. I, I can't tap into something like that. Again, in this text, this faith that they're rising up and walking about does not have to be something that was limited to men and women in your Bible. But God's people in 2024 can still operate and live in this kind of attitude. You say, how they do it? Notice their faith was in the promise of God. Here's what they said. They said, if God settled, if God said it, that settles it. If God gave a word, I'm going to take God at his word. But you see, there's 10 people that refuse to listen and they, they were locked out of the blessing of God because they would not take God at his word. Let me ask you a question tonight. What are you missing out on because you won't believe God? What are you missing out on because you won't take God at his word? Listen to this verse. Say, preacher, I don't believe that. Hebrews 3, 19. The Bible says this, that they could not enter because of their unbelief. Right. Y'all know the Bible says there's some places that Jesus could not do works because of their unbelief. Right. Well, that tells me it wasn't the giants that kept them out. It wasn't the walls that kept them out. It wasn't the opposition that kept them out. You know who kept them out? They kept themselves out. Listen, I, I don't know who goes to what church, but let me go ahead and preach, run this rabbit trail right here. If you go to Maranatha Baptist Church and Maranatha Baptist Church don't see God work, it ain't Preacher Chris's fault. It ain't the Republicans' fault. It ain't the Democrats' fault. You know whose fault it is? It's our own fault because we won't believe God. Now listen, y'all know, maybe not, are we in Gaston County right here? Right. I, I'm over in Alamance County, so y'all may be more spiritual than we are. You probably are. We got those crazy people back where I live. But back here, we think, people I go to church with, they think that whoever wins the White House determines what God does with the church. 
And boy, they're shaking in their boots. And they're living worried all the time. And boy, they think, well, if this one gets in, then maybe God will work. Or if that one gets in, we're not going to have God. We're gonna, this ain't going to happen. That ain't going to happen. Let me tell you all something, dear people. If we don't get to Canaan, we can't blame Donald Trump. We can't blame Kamala Harris. You can't blame who's in the governor's mansion. You can't blame what's going on in Charlotte. You can't blame what's going on in Raleigh. If I don't get to Canaan, and if I don't get to victory, I don't have anybody to blame other than myself. And they said it can't be done. But hallelujah, there's somebody in Joshua and Caleb while everybody else is saying it can't be done. They said, well, hold on a minute. God said it can be done. in the promise of God. Listen, I'm thankful for logic. I know some Baptist people I know think it's a gift of the Spirit to be stupid. <laughs> Ignorance ain't a spiritual gift. <laughs> Amen. I'm thankful for logic. I thank God for reason. I thank God for intellect. But I got something bigger than that. I got a word. Yep. And they had their faith in the word of God. In the promise of God. They had their faith in the power of God. They knew the one who was going to help them get there. How many of y'all believe it's still in the Bible? Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. If God be for us, who can be against us? A.W. Tozer is a guy that I read after. He made this statement. And it convicted the socks out of me. Praise God. I love you, brother. You're my new best friend. A.W. <laughs> Tozer made this statement. He said, the most important thing about you is what the first thing is that comes to your mind yes, when you think about God. Yes, What's the first thing that comes to your mind when God pops up? For, how many of y'all know we got people, they may not say it out loud, but we worship, we pray, we sing, we live like God's an old man upstairs. How many of y'all know God ain't popping Maalox? Right, right, right. God is not taking blood pressure medicine. That's right. He don't walk the floors at night. Right. He ain't scared a bit. That's right. But we got faith so many times that God is not who he said he was, but Joshua and Caleb understood God had a word. And they understood if God is big enough to get them out of Egypt, if he's big enough to part seas, if he's big enough to sit a cloud by day and a fire by night, if he's big enough to sit manna in the morning, quell me, water out of a rock, hallelujah, he's big enough to get us in the kingdom. Let me ask you a question. You got some faith in that kind of God? Number one, they was focused. Number two, they were faith-filled. Number three, and I'm done. They were fearless. If you look back in our text, Numbers chapter 13, you go back to verse 31 and 33, these 10 spies come back with what I call the grasshopper complex. They saw everything negative. How many of you know people still like that go to church every day? Right. How many of you, there's two kinds of people. There's people say, boy, God can do this. And there's people say, boy, I don't think God can do anything like that. And the sad part is, that is who the children of Israel listened to. They heard the, the words of these ten doubtful spies. Come on, bro. This is sad truth tonight, church. They wondered, or they spied that land for 40 days. Yeah. How many years did God's people have to wander around in the wilderness? Uh, 40 years. One year for every day, they said, God can't do it. Let me ask you a question. Who's going to waste away because you won't believe God? 
that could have been avoided. They didn't believe God. There's a whole lot of people in church living in yesterday. God can't do that anymore. He won't do that. I'm going to tell you something, dear people. My God said yesterday, today, and forever. They were fearful of these giants. And it caused them to live in fear. I don't know, Brother Chris, you got somebody that can come to play or however you want to do that. I want to tell you a story. I'm going to be done. Can I get a witness here? I hate a bully. Can anybody testify? Amen. I hate a bully. And I remember, Brother Chris, I was in the ninth grade. I'm just going to jump down here, praise God. I'm still young enough to do that. <laughs> I was bullied every day in the ninth grade by this meanest kid you ever met in your life. See, here's the problem. I was homeschooled. I was a preacher's kid, and I was redheaded. So how many of you know that's a good target for somebody to pick on somebody right there? <laughs> preacher's kids are weird. And homeschool preacher's kids are really weird. <laughs> this kid picked on me every day. Brother Chris, I remember I was in ninth grade. Brother Brian. And I remember I was in the layup line trying out for basketball. I remember this kid picked on me all practice. Tried to make me look bad in front of the coach. He would embarrass me a lot, try to embarrass me. I remember there's a lot of days in ninth grade I go to the bathroom and I just hide because I didn't want him to see me and take fun of me at the lunch table. I remember I, it got so bad one time I went home to my dad and I told my dad about it. I just cried to my dad. He told my dad about this kid. Fortunately for me and unfortunately for this bully, my dad is a whole lot bigger than me. And I remember I told my dad about it. I didn't think nothing else. I went to bed that night. I went to school that day. I went to basketball tryouts. And I was in the layup line. I remember about that time I made the corner, I looked up in the bleacher and I saw a big old shadow up there. And I looked even closer and it turned out my dad came to basketball practice. And he was staring a hole down through that kid too. Boy, about that time, I had so much boldness come on, Brother Chris. I, I started poking my chest out. I said, you ain't going to make fun of me now because I knew that kid wouldn't do nothing as long as six foot three, 250 pound Randy hops up in them bleachers right there. I knew who was in my corner. I knew who had my back. And I knew if he was in the bleachers that I had nothing to worry about. You want to know why Joshua and Caleb could live in this kind of faith. Because oh, yeah. see, if you go read that text, Brother Chris, the ten spies, they talk about the giants, Brother Brian. They talk about the land. They talk about the enemy. They don't mention God one single time. Oh. Let me tell you something, dear people. When you leave God out of the equation, your mountain's going to look really big. Your storm is going to look really bad. That wave is going to seem like it's way over your head. But hallelujah, if you would just measure up them giants next to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, brother, you're going to find out that, that we're not the grasshoppers, but they are. And when you put them up against our God, hallelujah, and I come to tell somebody, it all depends on what you're looking at. If you're looking at your storm, you're going to be afraid. If you look at your giants, you're going to be afraid. But hallelujah, on a Thursday night, if we'll take a real good look at the God of glory and the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, we're going to be able to say, Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. If God be for me, who can be against me? Is anybody glad that God we serve is bigger than Muhammad and he's bigger than the Virgin Mary? But he's the creator of God, the sustainer of God of this world. I'm glad I, the God I serve made the heavens and the earth. The God I serve got the children of Israel out of Egypt. The God I serve got Daniel out of the lion's den. The God I serve got the three Hebrew boys. What are you looking at tonight? As we close, Brother Chris is coming. Here's what I want to challenge you with. There is a price to pay, church, in living in unbelief. They had to waste away in a wilderness 40 years. It could have been avoided. They could have, they could have got in, but because of their unbelief, they're missing out on the blessing of God. Don't let your church, I know we got several churches, don't let your church miss out because you simply won't take God and His Word. 
You say, preacher, there's a whole bunch of negativity. Don't listen to them. Cut them out of your life. Don't surround yourself with people that all they see is giants. Surround yourself with people that see Canaan land. I don't know what your giant is tonight, but I'm glad you got a God who's on your side. I don't you listen, you ain't gotta be a preacher. God wants God, God wants the very best for every single one of your life in this world. Are you focused on? He's got the will of God for your life. Is your faith in the word of God? Is it the power of God? What are you afraid of tonight? Let's stand all over the church. Heavenly Father, have your will in a way in every heart and life, I pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. While we're standing, how many of us come and join in this altar and say, I'm going to believe God? Here we come. Here we come. Come on. Stepping out of your chair. Lord, I'm coming. Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. I wonder how many people are going to have to wither away because you won't believe. Lord, help me to believe you. Help me, God, to take you at your word. God, I know that you're able. I know you can. I'm trusting you. I'm believing you. Here we come. Here we come. Maybe you just want to come and tell him, thank you, God. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, God, that I am washed in the blood. I'm on my way to heaven. Thank you, God, that I put my faith and trust in you for my salvation. While these are praying, there's, there's folk in this room that the devil is swinging something right over your head because he knows you're scared to death of it and you won't move. You're paralyzed in your fear. Why don't you let God be God in your life? Why don't you believe him for the impossible? I'm gonna, here's what I'm going to do. I believe with all my heart that God's speaking to somebody about this right now. I don't know, maybe if it's a financial thing. I don't know if it's a, a, it's a relationship. I don't know what it is. But I know this. God is calling you to believe it. God is pleased when we believe him. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. I'm asking you, how many of them will step out and say, God, I don't know how it's going to happen. I don't know when it's going to happen. But Lord, here I come. Here I come. Come on. Come on while these are praying. There's somebody right now. God's drawing you. God's speaking to you. God's telling you it's time. Let go and watch what he can do in your life. Let go. And watch what he can do right now in your situation. While these are praying, you're here tonight and say, Preacher, Preacher, the Lord's been dealing with me. The Lord's been drawing me. I'm not where I need to be with him. My relationship with God is not right. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed while these are praying. I wonder tonight, would you come? Lord, I, I can't go home like a cane. I need to get what you've got for me tonight. Here you come. Come on. Come on. Don't leave like you came. God wants to give you Canaan land. Victory. Preacher, I'm not 100% sure I'm saved. I don't know without a doubt. If I die right now, I don't know where I'm going. Hands bowed, eyes closed. Preacher, please pray for me. Is there anybody like that tonight? I wonder if you just slip your hand up, put it right back down. Preacher, I'm not saved. Please pray for me.
Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. I'm asking you, God, that you would help us and that you'd do for us, Lord, what only you can do. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done this week. Thank you, God, for what you're doing in hearts. Lord, I'm thankful to know that we can have revival whether the tent's in the air or not. God, we can draw close to you whether the evangelist is in the pulpit or not. God, I pray what you've began this week, I pray would turn into a blaze. Lord God, in the hearts and lives of your children, have your will, have your way. We love you and we bless you. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.